Well, hello everyone. My name is Aaron Standard, and today we're going to talk about building headless ACA.NET services. Now, just like the videos we just did on ASP.NET Core integration and dependency injection, this is also a bit of a remake. And the reason why we're redoing this video is because ACA.Hosting is available now, which radically simplifies the amount of work you need to do to get ACA.NET to run smoothly in a background process, which is what we're going to talk about today. So what's a headless service? Well, if you're not familiar with the term, it's a service that has no public interface. There's no web API. There's no thing you can go look at in a web browser. It's only usually accessible via some type of background service. So for instance, it can be invoked via message passing. Maybe a headless service might consume messages from a web socket, or it could be from Remote, or it could be from another queuing technology like RabbitMQ or Azure Service Bus, or maybe an event stream like Kafka. The idea is that this service is meant to run in the background and it could be stateful, could be doing some deep sort of stateful processing like indexing or aggregation, or it could be doing something that is stateless like delivering transactional email notifications or doing uh, file transfers, whatever the case may be. But the idea is that headless services are usually kind of an important part of a mix, particularly if you're building, let's say, distributed systems that leverage Aka.net in some way. So we just want to cover in this video, how can you use Aka.Hosting to seamlessly deliver these using all the latest and greatest Microsoft.Extensions APIs to keep it simple. So the primary package that you need in order to actually build a background service effectively with .NET today is going to be the Microsoft.Extensions.Hosting package. This is going to incorporate a bunch of, let's say, generic services for being able to run things in the background. So that could be the iHosted service, could be a background service, you name it. Uh, it's basically sort of a catch-all way of being able to run these sorts of jobs uh, behind the scenes. And you can also even run these background jobs directly as part of an ASP.NET application if you want to. But the purpose of this video is when you're building an app that is just a headless service, how do you do it? So you want to use Microsoft.Extensions.Hosting. You can still leverage the rest of the Microsoft.Extensions ecosystem, like dependency injection, logging, config, health checks, you name it. All of that will all still work. Aka.Hosting is the real thing that ties Aka.Net into this ecosystem. Uh, there's a bunch of different flavors of Aka.Hosting NuGet packages out there. Whenever I'm working on a distributed system, uh, I always use the Aka.Cluster.Hosting package because that brings in everything. It's kind of a higher level package. But if I'm just building, let's say, a standalone Aka.NET process that doesn't need to use remoting, it doesn't need to use persistence, I'll just install the vanilla Aka.NET hosting package. Uh, you can learn more about Aka hosting here at this video, but this is going to make it really easy for us to run our actors in a background service that's part of one of these little headless console applications. This right here is a complete headless service example. And this actually comes from one of the Aka.NET .NET new templates that we'll hear about at the very end of the video today. And what we're doing here is we're just starting our host builder. We're configuring our DI container. And Aka.Hosting adds this extension method, add Aka, where we pass in the name of our actor system here. And we're gonna create a couple of different actors that are gonna talk to each other. One's just gonna write out to the console. The other is going to use a timer inside Aka.NET to periodically message the other actor, the hello actor. That's our little headless service setup. Let's go ahead and actually take a look at the source code real quick and see how well this thing runs. Now, this is the exact same code you just saw on my PowerPoint a second ago. Uh, this is a template that we ship for being able to help people create new projects. And what we have here are two different actors, our hello actor, which is just going to use the built-in Aka.NET logging system to write out to the console. And then we have this timer actor right here, which is going to take a reference to the hello actor using the dependency injection system to power all that. And we're gonna use this timer to periodically every second uh, message this other actor, or tell it to say hello. And if I go back to my program and I hit run, we'll see it begin to write out to the console here and it'll do this up until I press control C or until I stop the debugger up here. And that's all you need. Uh, this will go ahead and follow the same sort of lifecycle behavior that any other hosted service does in .NET. So when you send a uh, SIG term to go ahead and try to kill the application via control C or via any other sort of normal graceful shutdown mechanism, uh, the actor system will also gracefully terminate and dispose all of its resources, gracefully leave an Aka.NET cluster if it needs to and so forth. So using Aka.Hosting really keeps the implementation details of this application really, really simple. 
Okay, so just to recap, so we literally just ran a demo that came from our Akadot templates a solution here. You should go and install these on your computer, do .NET new, install Akadot templates. This will make them available for starting new projects, either via the .NET new uh, command line, or you can also use these templates directly in Visual Studio, JetBrains Rider, and VS Code. Uh, this .NET new install line will make sure it's available on all those different platforms. And then just use Akadot Hosting by default. Again, you can go ahead and watch our video to kind of see what it all does. But Akadot Hosting really makes the process of building headless services quite easy and cheap. Um, you know, it's basically just going to make sure that after you get your host builder up and running, you can just tie Akadonet directly into it and everything else will just work afterwards. So strongly encourage you to use that if you're building new Akadonet solutions or if you have existing ones, you should refactor them to use it. So if you have any questions or comments, please go ahead and leave them below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.